I built an automation that generates graphic designs for me that I can post to my social media channels. And it's going to save me so much time. I've done a bunch of videos on how I'm using code to automate my life and I've got another idea. Okay, so my idea is to code a tool which can help to automatically generate media assets for me. For example, every time I post a new YouTube video, I post one of these promo designs to my Instagram story to direct people over to my YouTube channel to watch the video. When you're producing a lot of these, the admin time can really add up. And I'm a programmer, so I've got to do something cool, right? So let's give it a go. Now remember, this is an MVP. MVP stands for Minimum Viable Product. Essentially, it's the bare minimum solution that you can provide to a customer in order to meet their core needs. In this case, I'm the customer. All I need to do is create an automation to generate designs to help me promo my latest YouTube video. I don't need to generate designs with different fonts, different colors. I don't need it to be in multiple different resolutions. So adding these additional solutions would be outside of the scope for an MVP. Essentially, I want to be able to add the thumbnails for my videos to a folder and then run a script which takes all of the thumbnail images and generates these YouTube promo graphics. The process of getting the thumbnails of the videos and then uploading the finished designs to Instagram could be automated. But remember, this is MVP. So we can save all of that fancy stuff for another time once we've proven the concept. For this project, I'm going to be using TypeScript. Realistically, I could have also used Python, but I've decided to use TypeScript. I've also found this NPM package, which is really nifty for editing images programmatically. It's kind of like a programmer's Photoshop. So I think we'll use it for this project. Before I get started, I'm just going to quickly set up my TypeScript project by running npm init. Then I'm going to install TypeScript, create my tsconfig file and sort out my file structure. Okay, so in this folder, I'm going to have all of the YouTube thumbnails for the videos that I want to create these graphics for. When the script is run, the finished designs are going to be outputted into the output folder. Inside of the source folder, we're going to write our TypeScript code. I'm going to start off by installing the canvas npm package and adding it to the app.ts file. I'm going to create a function called generate YouTube promo, and of course, implement a try catch. Next, we need to get the array of images from the input folder. Now, even though this project is just a single script with a single functionality, I'm still going to create reusable functions because it helps to keep the code base organized. So I'm going to create a reusable function called get input images. And as you can guess, this is going to get the names of all of the images from the input folder. Once we have the array of images, we can for each through them. Using the canvas npm package, we can create a new canvas and set it to the size of an Instagram story and then get the 2D context from the canvas. This is what we can work with to add graphics and text to the canvas. I already have a background that I like to use for a lot of my videos and my designs. In fact, you've probably already seen it in this video. It's a paper texture and I think it looks really cool. So I've got the still image of the background here in the assets folder. We can then load this image using the load image function from the canvas package. Because the background image is a higher resolution in the canvas, I'm going to quickly scale it down so that it fits the canvas. There's no quick way to do it with the canvas package, so we've got to do it manually. And I'm going to use the draw image function to add the background to the canvas. Because we want this to cover the entire canvas, we can set the coordinates to 0, 0, and then set the height and width to match the entire canvas. So you may have noticed that my paper background is in fact white, and in most of my videos, it's black. Unfortunately, Canvas doesn't have a function that you can call to just invert all of the pixels. So we have to manually loop through each pixel to invert it. We can then update the canvas to save those changes. So this is what our design looks like so far. It's a nice background, but we still need to add the thumbnail and the text to this design. To do this, I'm going to define a constant which is going to state where the top of our text and images is going to start on the Y axis. With Instagram stories, I like the graphic to be slightly higher than the middle of the screen. So we're going to divide the screen height by four to get this value. Now we're going to add the thumbnail image to our canvas. First, I'm going to load the image from the input folder and use the file name to complete the file string. Then we need to get the dimensions of the thumbnail to calculate the aspect ratio. This looks really messy, but it will help us to maintain the proportions of the image as we resize it to fit the canvas. I'm going to create a reusable function that's going to add the thumbnail to the template. This function is going to take the template, the thumbnail image, the Y value that we defined earlier, and the height that we want the thumbnail to be, oh, and the width that we want the thumbnail to be. We want the thumbnail to be centered, so we can do that by taking the canvas width subtracting the width of the thumbnail and then dividing it by two. This will give us some nice spacing around the thumbnail. I also want to add a white border to the thumbnail. Now you can't just add a border to the thumbnail using the canvas package. So I'm going to create a white rectangle that is 10 pixels larger on each side and then place the thumbnail on top of it to give the effect of a border. Let's just do that now. Beautiful. After adding the thumbnail, the next step is to add the new video text and the YouTube icon to the canvas. So we're going to create another reusable function which is going to take the template, a boolean on if we want to show the icon, and the position on the Y axis where we want the text to be. I'm going to define the text at the top to make things easier. We can set the font styling using the dot font property on the template. My brand font is Avenir, so that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to set the text color to white. 
If we're not showing the YouTube icon, I'm just going to align the text to the center of the X axis and add it to the canvas. But if we want to show the YouTube icon, we'll need to load the icon image from the assets folder, as well as set the icon height and width before aligning the text to the left and adding it to the canvas. Next, we can add the YouTube icon to the right of the text. And I've done some basic math here to work out the positioning of the icon. Okay, this is starting to look really cool. There's just one thing that's still missing. We still need to add the video title below the thumbnail. Now, all of the files in the input folder are named with the video titles of each YouTube video. So what we need to do is take the title of the YouTube video from the for each, which we did at the top of the script, and then split the string at the period to remove the file type. To add this text to the canvas, I'm going to create another reusable function that is going to receive the template, the video title, and the y-axis of the video title. We can start this function by styling the text. Now, if we just add this text to the canvas, it may look really good for videos with short titles but if we have a longer title you can see that the text is going to be overspilling outside of the canvas. So to fix this we're going to need to loop through each of the words measure how long they would be on the canvas and then add the words onto each line until the line can't take any more words. Once it's full we'll add the line of text to the lines array and then start a new line with the remaining words. This took way more brain power than I thought it would so if you have no idea what I said I'd recommend pausing the video so that you can look at the code. Once we have all of our lines we can then loop through them and add them to the template. So now the text is no longer overlapping. Now all that's left to do is to save the generated image to the output folder. We can do this by using the FS package to create a write stream and save the file as a PNG to the directory. Before I test this script, I've noticed that only 10% of the people that watch my YouTube videos are actually subscribed. So if you're enjoying this video and you're not already subscribed, please hit the big red button down below and tap the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. Back to the video. Now that I've finished writing the script, I'm going to test it on some thumbnails from some previous videos. Perfect. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out because in the long run, this is going to save me so much time. And I think it could be the start of a really cool project to help make content creation so much more efficient.